The path to machine learning and AI step by step takes zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain here, I'm going to try and put into context the value of machine learning and artificial intelligence. This is really a more of a value discussion by using an illustration. Okay. So it, it, let's say I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and start a machine learning initiative and the whole concept of machine learning again is to acquire knowledge. Okay. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're only going to try to acquire knowledge about the efficiency of our business. That is the efficiency of our manufacturing operations by machine, by area and by plant. Okay. Now we haven't attributed any metric. That is, how are we going to measure efficiency? Well, all we want to do is acquire knowledge about how efficient we are. Okay. Machine learning, machine learn, what machine learning does is machine learning acquires knowledge over time. So it's accuracy of knowledge early on in the machine learning pilot is going to be much lower than it will be much later in the pilot because machine learning is more accurate, the more data it's, it's seen over time. Okay. You can eliminate anomalies, you can ignore anomalies, that kind of stuff. Okay. But we're going to use this example to discuss these steps here. So the first step in the path to machine learning and AI is we have to understand what is machine learning and what is AI. We've already established that machine learning is the acquisition of knowledge and artificial intelligence is the ac acquisition of wisdom. That is machine learning is concerned with accurately knowing what your business is doing in real time and artificial intelligence is more concerned with producing optimal decisions. Okay. The second step that we have to do is we have to define how machine learning and AI can help my business. So in this case, our definition is going to be, it can help my business by accurately telling me how efficient my machine is running right now, how efficient my area, that's a group of machines is running right now, and then how efficient my plant is running right now. In most cases, that efficiency is limited to the performance of the actual equipment itself. But efficiency of a business is actually a lot more than just how efficient the business is running like that or how efficient the equipment's running. It's really how efficient the business is running. So when I'm calculating OEE, for example, which is an efficiency calculation of equipment areas and plants, one of the things that I ignore, I'm only doing those calculations based on the machines, the equipment that live inside of my OEE production model. But there's a lot of other things that I don't put in there. Like for example, my test lab, my quality test lab is never a machine inside of my OEE calculation. My warehouse, which houses all of my raw materials and my finished goods is never a, an area or a machine, but yet the efficiency of those operations plays into the overall how efficient my plant is operating at this time. How quickly it takes a material handler to get raw materials resupplied to a piece of equipment, that's an important calculation, all right, right? But it's it's never part of the OEE calculation unless the reason my machine is down the availability is down is because I'm waiting on raw materials unless you put a reason in the model for that. We would never know that the material handler is running inefficiently. Okay. So what we're going to say is that we're going to define machine learning and AI can help my business by accurately determining what my plant efficiency is. And then AI is going to make recommendations on how we can improve that efficiency. Here's that decision so that we can get that efficiency number up. Okay. So the first thing we do once we've determined how we can help my business is we're going to connect our data. That's the very next step. So in order for us to accurately predict machine efficiency, area efficiency and predict in plant efficiency, not predict it, but acquire that knowledge is we have to a know how all of our equipment's running, how, and how all of those groups are running. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect the data. So we have to get data from the edge. We got to get it from our SCADA system, our MES system in our ERP system in just the OEE calculation calculation work. We care about that stuff. So we're going to pipe all that into a unified namespace. If you need to know what the unified namespace is, then you need to go back and watch all of our previous videos where we talk about MQTT, IIoT, and the, and the value of the unified namespace. We talked about unified namespace in last month's videos. Okay. But the first thing we want to do is connect our data. Which data do we want to connect? The answer is all data. We do not want to make any assumptions.
assumptions about how the data is going to be consumed. So what we want to do is we want to get all of our data points throughout the entire enterprise. We want to get it mapped into a unified namespace. So we're concerned with raw values. We're concerned with scaled values. We're concerned with all data points. Okay. Think about it. That's right. What's the PLC firmware revision that we're running in a specific PLC? What is the, what's the serial number? Who was the opera? Who was the mechanic who installed it? What was the name of the OEM? All of that information. This is part of the reason that the whole IIoT infrastructure component matters. When I, when I install a sensor, I want to know, ideally I would, I would have the lot information and the, and the serial number from that specific sensor being published over MQTT into the unified namespace. So that is information I could consume. Why? Because machine learning is going to acquire knowledge about our business. Okay. And it's going to try and acquire more and more accurate knowledge. Okay. And then artificial intelligence, is going to give us optimal decision. The machine learning algorithm will no. determine that we don't make the decisions about what information is not important. Machine learning and AI make those decisions. Here's an example of some optimal decisions that an AI algorithm could give us. AI makes a recommendation to us, uh, stop using Pepperell and Fuchs inclination sensors. Here's why, because when we've compared, when machine learning has compared, acquired the knowledge about the accuracy of the inclination sensors when we're comparing Banner's inclination sensor to Pepperell and Fuchs, what we've discovered is that Pepperell and Fuchs higher um, error rate has is giving us bad information which is causing bad results as opposed to Banner's uh, lower error rate is giving us better information which is giving us better results. AI may spit out a report that says, we've determined that there is actually not a negligible loss but a measurable loss by using these specific sensors. And even though the banner sensor costs us 11 cents more per unit, we are losing 14 cents per unit by using the cheaper version. Therefore, there's a three cent gain. And a human being is never gonna be able to determine that. That information is on such a small level, a human being themselves is never gonna be able to turn, determine that information. That those are optimal decisions that machine learning and AI could spit out for us, okay? So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna connect our data into the unified namespace. This this is a critical component. You will not be able to deploy um, a wide scale enterprise machine learning AI without doing the unified namespace. Okay, this is why we drive it home so much. The next step after that is we got to map that data, all data into the IoT hub or into the cloud. We really, we're going to use the term cloud. Eventually, all this information needs to find its way into the cloud. For example, Tesla's self driving cars, it is not just your Model S. Uh, your Model S doesn't have a computer on it that's storing data into a database and then making decisions about whether or not the thing in front of you is a human being or a car based on just the information that's stored inside the Model S. What's happening is your Tesla uploads information it's collected to the cloud, then you have AI algorithms that are processing that information and downloading more accurate knowledge about your environment from the cloud. So what ends up happening is your Tesla gets smarter and smarter and smarter based on information that not just your Tesla is collected, but all Teslas have collected, okay? So when you think about that, that's the closed loop component of machine learning. The machine learning algorithm that's determining whether or not the reading that the sensor in the front of my Tesla is, is getting is a human, a dog, a fox, or an inanimate object, or another vehicle, or a semi, or whatever. That information, the decision it's making, acquiring that knowledge, is based not just on the data that your Tesla's collected, but on the data that all Teslas have collected. And that information finds its way into the cloud. Go ahead, Zach. Yeah like 10 different operators with 10 different machines, it's only op they're only operating based on the data that they have from that machine. Itself. Correct, only from the information that's coming from that specific machine. And here, and let's use this. So machine learning can do this. I can take 10 identical machines who are being running by 10 different operators. And if I have a machine learning algorithm that is running on my machine, and let's say there are only three operators that run machine number one. My machine learning algorithm is doesn't take into account the fact that I'm limited to just those three operators. So let's say the th there are things that three individual operators that are doing that are ultimately affecting performance of that piece of equipment. 
okay? So if I have the machine learning algorithm just running on the machine itself, the machine learning algorithm is gonna determine differences between the three operators, but it's also not gonna learn, effectively learn the true impact that those operators have, unless you were to take that machine and compare it to nine other machines that each have three different operators. There is additional information that the machine learning algorithm will be able to ignore to say that this is specifically, these outcomes are always specifically operator driven, not just operator driven from the three that I have to select from. All right, so then we get our data into the IoT Hub and then we need to pilot a machine learning um, uh, program. So in this case, what we wanna do, our, what we've determined how we, it can help our business initially is, we, I wanna know how efficient I'm running. So let's say I wanna acquire the knowledge about how efficient my, I am at the machine level, the area level, and the plant level. Traditionally, we do this with OEE. We say that we, we're gonna go ahead and calculate availability of our machine, the quality of the product that our machine's producing, and the performance of that machine, and we're gonna give ourselves an overall OEE number, okay? So this is completely arbitrary. It's totally arbitrary. Efficiency is, an, is, is always on a, it's a range, and it's always relative to whether or not somebody else is more efficient than us. Machine learning may not calculate efficiency based on availability, quality, and performance. Machine learning may, through its acquisition of knowledge, may determine, so as it acquires knowledge, it may determine that the most accurate acquisition or the most accurate determination of efficiency is not through availability, quality, and performance or there are other factors at play that we eliminate automatically, the human being eliminated, by saying that our availability is always a function of scheduled runtime versus actual runtime, right? right? This would be like line state. If you're driving a car on a road trip, it might be better to go at a slower speed because, or, you know, it's right. You're going to have free time anyways to run your machine, so it doesn't make sense to run it at 100%. You're going to use more electricity when you have free time anyway in your schedule that would it might make make you more profitable to run at 90 percent well well what is efficiency efficiency is in in manufacturing it's making the most money with the least amount of effort machine learning machine learning gives us the ability through acquiring knowledge over time our oee calculation never changes so let's say i acquire some knowledge Right, I, as a human being, I'm looking at AQP and OEE, and I'm acquiring knowledge over time, and I'm saying, you know what? Our performance number is always 60%. It's never higher than 60. Well, how is the performance number calculated? What we say is we have, a, we have a standard rate that that machine should run at. And when the machine is actually running, we are basically saying, this is how fast you're running compared to the rate we say you should be running at. The knowledge that we acquire, if we never go greater than 60%, Either we have crappy operators or our standard is too high. The machine was installed incorrectly. That's right. So then we lower the standard so that the number moves up, okay? That's acquisition of knowledge and that's what we do with that information. But with machine learning, machine learning is concerned with more accurately acquiring that knowledge over time. And so machine learning is gonna automatically account for the fact that we use the wrong standard to compare our efficiency to begin with. It's gonna automatically account for that as it acquires knowledge over time. So the fundamental difference here is that machine learning is focused on uh, acquiring the knowledge of efficiency over time and the algorithm itself uses the information that it's learned over time to more accurately give you this efficiency calculation as opposed to OEE, which is static. When we first define the OEE calculation, when we first define the inputs, these are just static recurring outcomes. What we ultimately want from machine learning is, tell me how efficient I am, okay? What we want AI to do, with our artificial intelligence to do with that efficiency number is we want artificial intelligence to take that efficiency number and a whole bunch of other variables and tell us what we should change about our business so we become more efficient. We, the way we do this already in, with OEE is we say, if the availability number is low, it means our equipment's down too much, let's go talk to the maintenance group. Hey, you gotta get equipment up and running, deploy a, a preventative maintenance program, change these bearings more frequently, that kind of stuff. With, when it comes to quality, we gotta say, hey, we need to do, if we see a low number, we, there's a human being 
being that looks at that, if the human being doesn't look at the number, doesn't look at it at all and it just gets stored, which is by the way, very common, that you may have really quali low quality numbers and not actually know it. You may just be accepting it. But if we look at the number, we see the numbers are low, then we do a deeper dive and we say, you know, do I have poor raw materials? Do, am I using crappy tooling? You know, do we have poor engineering in the equipment? What's the reason we're producing bad quality parts? And then in the performance number is, if we're running at low performance, I mean, are our operators taking, I mean, are they just shutting the machine off and go, taking long breaks or are they running the machine too slow? All these types of things. These are open loop decisions. Machine learning is more concerned with accurately acquiring the, the accurate knowledge about our efficiency. AI is going to go ahead and take a, is going to consume that information, going to consume, maybe consume this information too, and spit out the, the optimal, hey, we need to change this. A recommendation from AI may be something like your standard rate's too high. The number you are comparing yourself against is not accurate, and you're just using the wrong standard rate. Do you want to change it? So anyways, these are the initial steps in machine learning. So if I'm making the value proposition for machine learning, Right? If I'm making that value proposition, this is the way that I'm pretty much gonna make that argument. What video should I watch next? The video that you should watch next is probably the steps to AI as opposed to the steps to machine learning. This is really the step to machine learning. There's a higher level component here. I mean, the reality is, is that you do machine learning before you ever get to AI. Right now, there's this, the a, machine learning and AI are, they're just kind of, they're used interchangeably, but they're not. We've established that machine learning is concerned with the accurate acquisition of knowledge. And I think over a period of time, you have to acquire that accurate knowledge before you can ever even think about leveraging AI, right? We'll probably shoot that next, but yeah, yep.